What is up guys, Sondran here. We're in the 2023 Lexus NX350H. In this video, I wanna talk about how is the Lexus self-driving tech on the highway and how does it compare to Tesla's autopilot capabilities and GM's latest Super Cruise technology. So let's go ahead, go POV, and I'll show you how it actually is on the highway, which I think is really important for those that are looking for a long daily driver commuter, or just wanna know how much can they kinda reduce the stress of their daily driving commuting scenarios. Let's go ahead and check it out. How does it fare? All right, so we are on the highway right now in the greater Toronto area. And so what I'm gonna do is show you where you can go ahead and turn on the adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist button right here. So it's on your steering wheel. Again, I have the 2023 Lexus NX350H and this is the ultra luxury package. So you'll get this with the ultra luxury package as well as the executive package, etc. But all you need to do is go ahead and click this button right here and you can go ahead and see in the dashboard it's gone ahead and set the cruise to about three car lengths and you can adjust that here with this button as well it's you can actually see it's adjusting and changing the car that's in front and where it is in relation to us so right now i have it to three car lengths and now it says wait it's going to be unavailable soon if i don't touch the steering wheel so the one thing that you are going to notice with this vehicle unlike super cruise from gm where they have the sensor here and the sensor on the steering wheel up top to go ahead and track your eyes to make sure you're paying attention to the road this operates the same way as the tesla system in autopilot where you have to you know kind of touch the steering wheel a little bit to make sure that it knows that you're paying attention and that you're there so that makes sense um you know i'd say that's normal with super cruise i am a little bit spoiled i do wish there was that technology in the lexus but you can tell right away it's doing a great job it identifies that cars are coming in into my lane it's slowing down and you can see that kind of indication right here in your instrument cluster and again i'm not doing anything by the way this entire video i am not going to be touching the brake or the accelerator i'm simply going to go ahead and let this do its thing that i want it to do and so one thing i will say is it always does get confused when you come up to you know splits in the road so that's one thing that i noticed by the way is a problem with the tesla system and the super cruise system it does have a tendency to not understand where you want to go even if you have the gps coordinates put in it's not talking to that necessarily so that is something to think about but if you look at it right now you know it's doing 119 with the flow of traffic here i have it set to three car lengths i think it's like in terms of keeping the lane center I think it's a doing a good job. You could probably see right now, it's doing a great job again. And once again, I'm just kind of holding my hand here, not to actually put input inside of the steering wheel, but just to keep that, you know, warning from going off. Doing about 105 right now. The cruise is set to 119. You can see that it's doing these turns again really well, about 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. So I know for the majority of the video, it was kind of in the best kind of weather conditions possible. So I wanted to come on a rainier day so you could see how it's actively working with the system. Then I'm gonna show you the lane change assist feature as well that this Lexus does have. It's included in almost every package that you can buy. So above 90 kilometers an hour. Now, if I wanna go ahead and go left, I would just hold down the signal. It's gonna check my surroundings and it's automatically gonna perform my lane change for me. And you can see that there in the tachometer and the dash. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase speed. Let's go up to the 120. And let's say I wanna go back to the right. So I'm just gonna hold the stock up. It's gonna look around and it's gonna make the change for me. And that's that. So pretty simple, intuitive. You know, it's working again in these rainy conditions. So again, I can go ahead and hold it down left. It's gonna check. Perfect. And it's back in here. And it's, it's doing a really good job. Like, you know, these aren't the most horrendous conditions that you'd find, but it's raining quite a bit. And I feel like the system is doing just really well with the lane changing, the keeping in the center of the road. Now, in terms of the snow, that's going to be another thing that I'll also do videos on. Unfortunately, I haven't had too much of a chance to test this in like full on snow. We can expect probably it's not going to work as well. If you have the sensors blocked and everything by the snow, of course, it's not going to work. So here we go again. Triggering the left lane change. Now it's saying it's unavailable. 
I don't know why actually. Probably, I don't know if it has anything to do with that being an HOV lane. It really shouldn't. But let's go ahead and try to make a right turn here with the lane change assist. So I'm gonna hold up on the stock again. It's checking my surroundings. It's doing my lane change for me. And we're done. We can do that again. You just hold it up. It'll automatically take control. And you're done. So pretty intuitive. It works. It works well, even in these conditions. And again, you're going to see it starting to pick up speed because nobody's up in front of me and it's going to hit that 119 kilometer limit that I've set for the system. And again, I'm going to go ahead and switch lanes. It's not going to do that for me. I'll go ahead and manually check, but then it does reacquire. So once you're back into the lane, it reacquires the lane that you're in and it's going. So what I do want to show you is kind of how quickly does the system you know, warn you once your hands are off. Now I do find, I wish that the warning time was a little bit longer. I, I kind of find it a little bit annoying that it comes on so quickly, but I understand that's probably due to safety regulations, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll do a little test. So my hands are now completely off. Let's see how long it takes before the system starts nagging me. Like where are your hands? So that's what, about 10 seconds so far. So like what, 15 seconds-ish, and now it's saying it's gonna be unavailable soon. Not that it's gonna disengage, gives you visual warning, audio warning, another visual warning. Now it's visual and audio. It's still engaged, but it's upset. There we go. So no, it's still engaged. Now it's just really warning me and it's slowing down. So now I'll go ahead and do this and it's deactivated. So I think it gives you a lot of time before it actually deactivates, but I really do wish it would give you more time before the initial beeping or the visual indicator. I think 15 seconds is not enough to be honest with you i would love if it was like 30 seconds that would be much better but if you get in the habit of you know just holding your hand right here um then that's not an issue so much so i'm gonna go ahead into the middle lane again you can see that it knows what my cruise setting was at which was 119 we're doing about 111 right now i'll click that back on now it's going to go back to the 111. now if i hold this button it'll go up five kilometer increments or the button if i press it to go up one it'll just go up one kilometer an hour so now i've gone ahead set it to 120 but again it's not going to do that because it knows there's a car in front of me and i've set it to three car lengths now if i want it to be more aggressive i can just go ahead and click this button right here and that'll go to two car lengths and now you're going to see the car is actually picking up and it's going to try to close that gap and get me up to that 120 kilometer an hour cruising speed but again like in terms of like lane keeping it does a great job so i really do appreciate that and i do feel like it is natural i feel like it's natural compared to the escalade and the tesla in terms of its braking um, and in terms of its acceleration now my wife has mentioned a few encounters where she felt a little uncomfortable where it maybe broke or started braking one or two seconds later than she would like um, but i honestly haven't experienced that too much at all um, and I usually go with the, the second or two car length setting. Um, if you go with the three car length setting, you obviously get more of a cushion for yourself. But again, it does a really good job. Um, it's just, again, some of the downfalls are in comparison to autopilot and super cruise, no lane change capability, right? Super cruise and autopilot knows where you've mapped in the system so it can know when you have to start changing lanes over to get to an exit which is really cool this does not have that and here we go through another braking experience so I'm, again i'm not doing anything it's braking significantly now gradually and it's braking like i would so in this situation again and now it's kind of chilling at 60 kilometers an hour and it's doing a good job here so again, it's like, it's gradual. And what I like about the system is that I know that it's reacting to what I see. So it's not like I ever feel like, does the car see what I see when I wanna react or think about a situation? It does do that and it does do that well. Now, 
you know, I've had this car, you can see, for about 3,600 kilometers. And a lot of those kilometers have been highway kilometers. And I'm very impressed with the system. It does miss out on some of those cool other features. So again, it's braking, it sees that here. So maybe it's braked a little bit too much there, but now it's coming to a stop behind this Mazda. But it's doing a good job. So maybe I'd say, you know, it maybe it did a little bit too much braking there and maybe it should have accelerated just a tiny bit more but generally I think it's doing a great job here and again you can actually set up settings in the vehicle so if you go into the settings here how aggressively do you want it to go ahead and accelerate back up to speed how aggressively do you want it to go ahead and start braking and I've set it up to the most aggressive levels so if I go to the vehicle driving assist settings this is where I'm gonna be able to actually adjust some of those capabilities and features right so driver support so dynamic radar cruise control system acceleration I have it set to high right you can go ahead and set it to medium or low but I find high is probably the most realistic to somebody that's driving so I keep it on high guide message you can also go ahead and have that enabled or not enabled and then reducing speed right so how do you want it to reduce speed do you want it to reduce speed quicker or more aggressively in this case i actually prefer it reduces speed low but if you wanted to change it to high mid um, off you can go ahead and do that but i'm gonna go ahead and hit low for that there's other options here in terms of like Again, alert options on lane departure warning. That's separate actually from the other piece and then lane change assist. But basically you can set this here. That's the most important part, the dynamic radar cruise control. I have it set to high. But overall, I'm very happy with it as a basic kind of commuting assistance capability for the highway. Of course, you can go ahead and use this on any road. So, you know, I talk about Super Cruise being awesome. Super Cruise on GM's portfolio only works on the highway where this adaptive cruise control system with lane to keep works in any road i'm just saying for highway driving which is probably where most people are going to use this system that's where i'm really comparing it to and this is where i think it does honestly take off a lot of the edge of doing long commutes daily driving right now as you can tell we're driving you know i got a 39 minute 54 kilometer drive ahead of me through this traffic of toronto which nobody loves and you know i'm here with you guys right now kind of just going through the system and it's doing a good job of you know not making me stress out so much about this traffic if i was in my manual you know r8 right now it's it's not going to be a great experience but here it's a comfortable you know good experience and i feel comfortable that the system is going to be able to you know, break for me and accelerate for me and keep me in the middle of the lane and just make this entire experience much easier. But I have to say, I, I do miss out on that tech of autopilot and super cruise. I'd say both of those technologies in terms of the ability to keep you within the lane and the ability for them to know where cars are in relation to you. I'd say the Lexus is like 95% of the way there in terms of like the core abilities of understanding what's around you, but it does miss out on some of those uh, additional features that GM Super Cruise and Tesla Autopilot does have. Are those deal breakers? No. Was I, you know, is that a deal breaker for a decision when you're looking at this Lexus NX or a GM vehicle or a Tesla vehicle? No, I think, look, it does the basics of it good. I'd say maybe more than just the basics, a little bit more advanced than the basics. I think it does it well, like for the core use case of, solving this problem which is kind of re reducing stress in your long traffic congested commutes which is traditionally what i go through when driving to and from toronto so honestly I i'm really happy with it i do wish i feel like the gm system and the tesla system are more lenient on the warnings i do wish there was some sort of setting that I can make the warning not come up visually and via audio so quickly i wish i could set that up to like 30 seconds that would be so much better but generally guys, like honestly, I'm very happy with the system. By the way, some people also put their leg right here. You can see here, right right on there and that'll help. Again, I'm not condoning, you know, not paying attention and driving. I'm just telling you the reality of what I know when I talk to people, what they try to do to help take the edge off of kind of this daily driving. And again, it, it really is making it really simple and easy just in these horrible traffic condition roads to just make it just easier. Overall, very happy with the system. 
Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment box down below. Uh, like this video, make sure you subscribe. So follow me on the journey on this NX. I'll be providing updates of my ownership experience. Um, if you're looking for an NX, if you got questions, let me know in the comment box down below. I've made multiple videos on this NX and I made multiple videos on why I chose this Lexus NX over you know, the Q5, the GV70 from Genesis and a whole bunch of other vehicles. So again, make sure you subscribe to see all that content, but been really, really happy with this vehicle. All the tech has been phenomenal awesome to use, intuitive, easy, and we couldn't be happier, especially with this H model and the fuel economy that we get on the highway and in the city. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, right? You can see basically in this entire video, I haven't really done anything, even in these braking scenarios, acceleration scenarios, turning, it's doing it all for me and it's just super simple, easy and reliable. So I'm glad to have this system, you know, in the palm of my hands when I need it, it just makes it so much easier. So hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you all in the next video.